really try to catch it on the time. I'm going to do this Hello? Yo. Hello? You might have. There's a couple of us over there. Yeah, come on, check. Yeah, there was two black sweaters in there. I can't tell. Just come on and check it out. All right. Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all. Just letting the links catch in. Um, send me the message. How did I see the um? <laughs> if I wanted them to the chats, still learning. Still, forgive me. I'm still learning all of this. I ran it with me, the technician. Yeah. There we live. There we go. Yo, so I'm going straight into it. Credit, purpose of credit is for business and financing. Can't stress that enough. Not buying how you know, not buying you know basic stuff like shoes, gold teeth, hats, you know, discretionary items. The purpose of credit. That's why everybody messes up. Credit is for business. Now I'm going straight into that because you know black empowerment requires education. And if we're not focused on education every chance we speak, then I don't know what we're talking about. And I think that's where we get caught up a lot in the community where we're discussing stuff that's just a lot of rhetoric and we're not going straight into the to, you know, to the uh, to the important stuff. I mean, right now the important stuff is us developing our business acumen, our business uh, understanding and our abilities within the world of our crafts. And our crafts ultimately will be um, what backs our businesses and a lot of our early on businesses, which should be shaped around our crafts. So going forward again, business is for credit. I mean, credit is for business. <laughs> really, uh, credit is for business. And anything else besides that, dub it off. Um, there's three credit reporting agencies. Equifax is on the East Coast. TransUnion is in the Midwest, Experian is on the West Coast. Whether, what I, why, they're, they're there to monitor different things. So typically, if you, you know, if you're looking at your credit report and you see um, more on one than the other, it's because they, the accounts were sold or, or the people that you got the debt with or the credit with, they posted it in that specific credit reporting agencies. So use the sound in the background, you know, I'm downstairs in the studio, um, a lot going on with you. Going forward, um, shout out to everybody that's on it because you shared a lot of feed. Going forward, you get the credit bureaus, there's three credit reporting agencies. Know that, get used to them. Going forward, use Credit Calm. I wish we had a black owned company that was just like that. However, we don't, so we got to use what we can until we can, and that's just the real warfare. Um, so, the credit reporting agencies. Um, typically post information. It used to be every 30 minutes, but now it's almost every 15 minutes. And so, almost you know, 70, depending on what type of account you use it with. And so, you want to get used to checking the credit almost every other day, every seven days at least, and see how things are To make sure that nothing got new posted on your account, making sure that nobody's on your account uh, posting anything that you're not aware of. I seen somebody I spoke to one sister and she was like, I checked my credit, you know, you know typically every couple of months. Um, but she didn't check it for like a year. And come to find out she had almost 18 accounts open in her name in that year time. You know, it was just, you know, so with that being said, check your credit and um, call them as much as possible. That way you can make sure that you don't have nothing going on in there. Going forward, how to use your credit report. So a lot of times, um, there's two of music in the background, so a lot of them. Um, a lot of times, what will happen is, um, they're cool, right? They ain't gotta turn it down. Um, what will happen is, we're applying for certain things, and the things we're applying for, such as a car or whatever have you, we 
just go there without thinking like, all right, we should have some stuff on the floor. So how do you use your credit report is basically understanding that you're more inclined to get on the they run a credit, a business loan, financing, mortgage, whatever, if they've already paid off the already processing them in a similar or something of the equivalent. And so it's in our best interest to associate it and allow people who have um oh talk up my bad. My bad, I just sort of um the links. I didn't even see the um chat box. All right, back on that. So depending on what you're going for, you would try to find um credit from someone around yourself or someone that you may know that's similar to something that you're applying for. So for example, if you're going for a house, and if you know anybody that has a house, you would try to uh, apply, um, get that person to add you onto the house. Let me know if it's louder, y'all, so I want to comment more. Um, going forward, I could go on forward, if you're going for a car, you want to find someone with a car. Now let's say if you can't find somebody with a car or a house, you want to increase your credit availability so that when you're applying for the loan, they're not seeing you know, a good $300 card or $400 card. They want to see high amounts of credit on your, on your report. And you know that's just the nature that we want to have. And some credit reports have, I'm talking about, they could be at a 450 and they can have $300,000 worth of credit on it. You know, available credit still. And so these are things that we want to get used to. And not that that's a typical thing, but there are cases when there's people like that. And getting approved for loans or financing when you're in that position, it's easier when you have a high level of, of, of accounts on it. So now anything on your credit report is a trade line. So this is when you hear people talk about trade lines all the time. And they're like, ah, right, you want to get a trade line trade. Anything on your credit report is a trade line. So going forward, you're, I forgot which law, but it's a fair credit reporting app or something like that, which allows a spouse to add someone onto their credit. So this is where you hear people soliciting trade lines. I'm not hating on anybody with it. Just understand that you, if your husband or your girlfriend or your best friend, brother, sister, whomever you may know has credit cards, they can add you onto their credit. If a house is paid for, is it meaningless to have any name on it? Um, I just read a comment on the answer that in a second. I'm going to that with equity. So you want to get used to asking people around you, people that you may know, what type of um, credit they may have, and keeping a good nature. And it also pushes you, motivates you to keep a good relationship with people because you never know who has a certain type of credit account trade line that they can add you on to and you would be considered a spouse and they would add you on to um going forward i'm gonna lie um then they wilding oh um, man studio life there's a thousand people in the front studio um oh no no that's a lot yeah, that's over. And that's over. That's, that's, that's over. Yeah, that's yeah, sorry, I got to have in the business at the same time. Um, going forward, so let me ask this sister question. What if your house is paid for? And this is a good question. Um, credit, the credit reporting agency's purpose is to put detailed information about the credit that you have or the debt that you have. So if you have a house that is paid for, it's not going to be in your credit report. In order to get it back on your credit report and to turn it into credit, you would have to take an equity line of credit out. And that's typically up to 85% of the value of your house. And so with that, that's going to make you, you know, get that line back on your business. And what I would suggest to do with that equity line of credit is immediately buy foreclosures or property that is immediately going to make you a quick flip or a substantial long-term flip and a quality investment. So that way, if you get a $200,000 line of credit, $200 line of credit based off of your equity, you take that money, you go buy two, three houses, 
straight cash for you know forty thousand, fifty thousand dollars each, sixty thousand each. That's one hundred eighty thousand, whatever it is. And then you turn around and do the same thing with those houses. You get a line of credit based off the equity of those properties, and then you turn around and you pay off the first line of credit, and you continue to do the same thing. And this is that quick flip with the housing and using credit to go forward. And at the same time, that's a powerful line of credit that you can turn on. And they almost typically, there's a lot of banks that give um, lines of credit based off the equity of the house, using your house as a form of collateral. And they are pretty lenient. And depending on your credit, they will definitely do it. But it almost doesn't matter about your credit. As long as the house is in your name and the deed is um, available and in your name, they're guaranteed to um, give you that. Um, I can help you find some banks that do that. It's, you can do it yourself. You can just look up equity lines of credit um, for houses. And then let's see, going forward. Um, so now your credit report. The credit reporting agencies are federally sanctioned businesses, whatever you want to call them, and entities. And with that being stated, they're under federal law. So the reason why we're able to jump around and people get confused with letters Everybody hears these debit validation letters. Your state and any contract you stop, you sign, it has typically at the very bottom of it, the state laws that are applicable to that contract. So if you sign a contract, any contract in any state, the state laws apply to that contract. Over And they override the federal laws because the federal laws will only be able to come in based off that contract. Um, however, this is the, you know, I saw the right confusing. This is how it works. So for example, and let me show you, this is why it gets kind of confusing. Why people, you know, when people hear debit validation letters or debt letters, they have to understand that each state has their own laws. And so the first thing I tell people to do, and the first thing that anybody should tell you when they're trying to help you or inform you about your credit is to tell you to go to your state. And this is kind of what led me to do this because it pissed me off when I found out that they were, people were telling people, the city was telling people that they have to know what they credit and they're not even showing them the basics of how to understand it. And it's really sad. And I know some people are like, what well, does this have to do with black empowerment? But having a basic understanding of finance in this current playing field of America and in the world is extremely important. So let me set this up so you see exactly what I would type in. And so you can look the feed on this, I can see the comments and shit that they can see. All right, so what I would have you type in is, so we were in Georgia. Oh, gee. This is exactly what I would tell somebody to do. And, and I would have to look and see and, and just get used to seeing the laws that govern the state. You know, and I don't have a specific site I send them to. Cause I don't know. And that's why the first thing I do is to tell them, type in your state and let's just see what's going on. And then from there, we can have an idea of exactly what letters and what direction we need to go. In. However, Someone asks, can you give advice on how to enter summons to court for debt collection? Um, yeah, I got you in a second, Adina. Um, what is that? Mm -hmm. See, Georgia. So, and this is anywhere. Let's go to Texas. And forgive me, y'all. There's a lot going on. There's two sessions going on. And so this is how I would walk anybody down the line with their credit. 
and understanding what letters they actually need. So you don't need an attorney to do this. You just need to go online and look at your state's debt, debt, um, debt collection laws and your state's debt collection statute of limitations, or that in debt collection laws statute of limitations. And then from there, you know what you need to say. If you're in California, it's different. New York, it's different. And I found this out by accident. I've been reading some blogs. But typically, I tell people that sometimes they don't understand. Exactly saying or I'm telling the lies. So I send them to this first. This is New York City. So New York City, when you scroll down and you see number eight, no business relationship with the country. Right. So New York, if your debt was sold, I would tell you to use this. And then I would go and try to validate the actual license of that. But even before I would do that, I know that in New York, you have to actually operate in New York City um, to buy debt. And it's very hard to operate outside of New York to buy debt. And then of course, the statute of limitations. So in New York State, you see, it's four years. So although you have a credit card with Macy's, in New York, it's on sorry, my computer's like that. It's only four years solid. So it's different in other states. And so if someone's telling you what to do with your credit, the first thing they should actually tell you is ask you is what state are you in? And they should tell you to look these things up because it's very basic. Then you go back to your credit karma and you analyze exactly what's going on um, with um, your credit report. So you just can't say, I need help with my credit. The first thing you should do is look at it. Then from there, know your laws. And based on the laws, you'll be able to go back and forth with the basic aspect of defending yourself. And nine, like eight times out of 10, these things apply and just being able to actually click on it and see exactly the details. And when I say details, this goes into debt validation. So the debt validation, federally speaking, is, once again, oh, shout out to you. one of the collections were deleted. So again, with debt validation. So federally speaking, in order to validate debt on the basic terms, a debt collector or a creditor only needs to um, provide your name, address, date, and the amount. So you don't want to do that. What you want to do is validate of that business even being able to operate in your state first. So before you even think about the debt, someone should tell you what exactly are we are they are they actually allowed to operate in my state? And you wouldn't believe how much businesses are. So, and this is a very strict rule. Yeah, you can call them up too. You can definitely call the credit report. But before you contact anybody, these are the steps that you do. You just don't want to jump into it and call in anybody. You don't even want to talk to an attorney. And now I would. This is exactly what I want you to. I would tell you to log into your stuff, go to your credit karma, go to overview. I don't want to know your score. Then I would say, look at your two little scores. And right underneath the score, it says, see details or see credit factors. You click on that. You go to either derogatory remarks or total um, accounts. From total accounts to derogatory remarks, the first thing I would tell you to do is, then after that, I would tell you to go to your Google, open up your, um, type in your state debt collection laws, and then open up another Google tab, your state debt collection laws, statute of limitations. And that way you have the two windows open, and you have a lot of information right there in front of you. And with that information, you can immediately start defending yourself with your credit report. Then you go back to your credit report, and then the first thing I would ask you is, well, I would ask you, what's your state statute of limitations? Then you go back to your credit report and look at the date of anything on your credit report. If anything's past the statute of limitations on your, for your state, that debt is no longer valid. 
and that's a debt validation. That's one thing that's clicked off. Then from there, and this is how we're using our state's law versus the federal law, because any debt that we take on is 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 regulated by the state in which we took that debt on. Um, first and foremost, then it goes into a federal state. There's very few cases when the federal government can get involved with basic um, stuff like this. Um, and we'll go into what happens when go forward. So again, in this whole process, don't contact no debt collectors. Do not speak to them about anything. And you want to do this first. And as you organize these things going forward, you have a clear path on saying, oh, this debt isn't even on that. I just met one sister and she paid somebody. To she didn't even look at her credit report. She had credit karma, click on the details, and just assumed that her credit was bad because of the number, and then just didn't, um, and then paid somebody to do her credit, like $2,500. It was crazy. I'm like, and then she, it was a scam. She got her money back, but when she finally got on the phone, she had one thing on her credit that was six years old in Georgia, and it was illegally posted. So going into that, so after you check the SOL, and that's when you hit SOL, and that's a keyword, SOL, um, what date do you follow? You follow the date that says, all right, that's a very good question. Now, this is a very good question, but I almost skipped that. Mm, the date open on the account. So, and the date open has multiple meanings. So not only does the date open mean when they first posted, but the date means that when they got it. So and that's a very good piece of information. So I know that was kind of tricky. So, all right. So if the debit collector bought your debt, when they got it is when they open it up, right? When the original creditor got it, that's when they open it up. And this is how sometimes you may have two things posted on your account for the same thing, but they have different dates. And that's why it's very important to click on it and see exactly the amount and who the original creditor is. They always have to post if they got it from someone else. Then once you see who they got it from, then you can start to bake back time the date. Very good question. Um, yeah, the date of delinquency is the federal law. The date of delinquency is just also your state law. The date of delinquency, you can look up that for your state, but it's typically 30 to 180 days. And it's the date of the last contact and the date that you last paid your bill. 30 days after that, you go to um, delinquency status, and then 60 days or something like that for that, they send you the collection status, and then that's when they're allowed to sell it. Um, that's the date. So if that was five to 10 years ago, and they're still selling that debt, it's no longer allowed. Now, you just don't want out. The good thing about knowing and that question is because as you're looking through your report, you want to look for unfair business practices. These, these debt collectors are practicing a lot of illegal actions. And so with that, what we can do is, first off, when you look up your state, you're also, the good thing about looking up your state, and the reason why I asked you to do that is because one of the first things you'll see is, do you have to have a license to buy debt in your state? And unfortunately in California, it doesn't matter. And in California, any any person, um, all debt is almost the same. It is like almost the same in California. It's kind of weird. I'll show you in a second. California, but California also has a four-year term on all debt. However, all debt is considered then the same. Um, I'll get to evictions in the back. Uh, that's how I'm gonna put. So going forward, so you see North Carolina. After three years that the creditor has on that suit for debt, they are barred from this lawsuit. That's crazy. See, um, so we want to go to here. So this is Texas. So as you see here, this is the Texas state um, debt collectors um, license verification, and you see, blah blah. blah prohibits a third party collecting bureau engaging in blah, 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 unless the third party collector of the bureau has obtained a surety bond and filed it with the office. So unless you are operating in Texas and you have a surety bond listed on this site, you are not allowed to buy debt. Now going forward, sometimes you might see their name listed and that's cool because you want to make sure that they're properly timed. You see here it says date filed, right? Now, this one, I forgot what happened with this company. 
um, yeah, active, right? Very important. Because you heard the person out. If you're now going forward, if your debt was bought by this company prior to this date, that's a lawsuit. That's an illegal business transaction. So that's now going forward with you. So this is why you just can't jump out and say, what letter do I need? People like, you'll just, what? I'm like, it doesn't work like that. You have to just look at your report and understand what's going on on your report. And I would rather you under, and I teach people how to understand it. This is for North Carolina. New York doesn't have one like this. You can just call up. This is for Florida. So any of these states, you would just look up if you see someone bought your debt. Now, typically, how to read your report, going back to reading your report. Um, if you have, and so people be like, I can guess, like, if you have, if it's licensed. So before, like, let's say if you tell me your credit report and I don't know what, I don't like to know the details too much of the accounts. And so if you do see that the debt is legal, typically legally purchased debt is from a hospital or from the college or from like like in Virginia, they find you and they put it on your credit report and they sell it to a legal debt collection company. I forgot their name. Um, so that's an easy way. To, and then from there, now you know how to deal with it. So just from seeing like the brother, a person asked the date and their name being on there, you look them up to see if they're valid. Now you know how to deal with them in what tempo. Excuse me. Then the second date is where you find out how to address them because, for example, um, they may, so let's say there's a legal spot that bought the debt. Then you look at the date and then the next thing I would say is, um, thank you baby. Um, the next thing I would say is, all right, they bought the debt. When was the last time they posted on your credit report? buy the debt and what you'll see is like a lot of um car dealerships when they buy it when they sell it and they sue you in court they just leave it alone and they forget about you and it just sits there and so i would tell somebody if it was fresh just leave it alone um and see what they do if they don't sue you and it just sits there leave it alone if it is then um you would know what temple to go because sometimes they may sue you and then you have to you have to stop them in court. That's a whole different strategy. And sometimes it's not that astringent. I haven't met anybody whose cases are like that. Somebody who was being sued by American Express in court. And I think we were even still able to work with that if I, if I remember right. So now, and this goes down to, I see the person asking about evictions. So this is the same thing with evictions. So you will look at the data was posted did they sell it? Was it a law firm? Was it the actual name of the landlord? Was it, um, is the landlord, so if it was a landlord and they posted in your credit report with an attorney, is that landlord a scumbag? So you would look up that landlord on the civil um, courts in your state and see how much cases they have in court to see if they're actually the type of landlord to be fighting a lot. You um, Then from there, you would be able to say, all right, this person's not going to respond to this letter. I'm going to ask him for this. And sometimes you're in a position where you know the debt is correct. There's nothing you can do. But based off the credit report, it looks like oh, then you send this letter. You know, and that's kind of the tempo and way in which you attack um, going forward. So if this debt was sold, you will validate the debt and see if the debt was properly, um, de um, depending on the state you're in, they're allowed to contact, um, but federally, I don't believe they're allowed to contact your employer, but it depends. Um, some states allow some kind of craziness. You can be locked up in some states for debt. Uh, let's see, going forward. Um, so that was recognizing fraudulent companies. And again, this is very important. I can't stress this enough because they're not, allowed to operate in your state at the time they bought your debt and they posted it on your credit report to do this then. Let me see, keyword. 
unfair business practice. So going forward, that's exactly what I would say to that to that. Um, someone asked if it's charged off now, your capital one's not gonna reopen it. Once they charge it off, um, they're not gonna do it. You can dispute anything in your credit report. First thing you wanna do is look at how it's posted in your credit report. Utility bills, sometimes I call it sitting on the water. And let me say this to some people, some people may have to sit on the water. There's tricks to getting it off. I'm not gonna lie. Um, there are a lot of tricks to getting stuff off. You can, let me show you this one. So FTC, right? I'm not suggesting that any of you um, lie, but on my shirt, dirty, I repeat that, whatever. I'm in the studio, so what I like to put my shirt on. That's paint, y'all. <laughs> crazy. Um, what you call it? Um, that yeah, look, that's bugging me. I'm not going to repeat that. Depending on how they post it on your credit report. So, if, like, well, I got, I got Con Edison off my credit report twice, and I was sued. Um, they don't respond. You just have to know that. And I found that a lot of that information through the blogs. You have to look at, you know, how your biz, how the business interacts with the internet. You know, and how they interact with the information and does the business, you know. It's Ask G. Ask G. Ask G. Ask G. Oh, I ain't looking at him. Man, traffic here tonight. I know, man. I'm on here doing this live feed. What's he doing? I'm on YouTube. Doing this live feed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's Ask G, whatever it is. Yo, G. Yo, G. Yeah, so depending on how they post it, and what they are so if it's a major company they may immediately respond especially if it was freshly put if it's a small business um but they have a lot of accounts they may not respond sometimes the big businesses they respond quick so it depends on so not big businesses don't respond they respond quick but they don't have your information so the small businesses may not respond fast, but they'll have all your information. So it depends on what type of co you know company it is. If it was a major utility company, um, I know credit, on um, my credit, um, Comcast, they sell their stuff immediately. And depending on which state, because I know Comcast, I know it's in Georgia and another state, they, um, huh? Oh, hell yeah. You want me anymore? Yeah. Ah, so I was saying, um, so let's see, that was that, um, recognizing fraudulent companies dealing with, um, um, charge-offs, I uh, guess, no, not charge-offs, what you said, um, moving evictions, yes, evictions is sort of the same thing, so let me go back, how I got evictions off, my personal credit report was, I just asked them for the original information. Remember, it, there's two different organizations. Just because the county clerk seems like it's the government, it's not. That's a separate entities than the credit reporting agency. So when you tell a credit reporting agency that, um, that this account needs to have a copy of my original report and data, they're gonna turn around and tell the county clerk with the original data. The county clerk is gonna say, well, only thing I have is this. And then the credit reporting agency is gonna say, that's not good enough, we need this specific thing. Now, civil court and, and housing court is civil court. So just because you were brought to civil court doesn't mean that they actually did it right. Civil court is not the same thing as criminal court. A lot of us, not to say we get that twisted. Criminal court, they have to prosecute and have to do their due diligence. Civil court, there is no due diligence. You just do, if whoever goes to court and whoever doesn't show up to court, and then from there, the judge is gonna be, you know, deliberating between it. So if you were sued for not paying your rent, and you actually did pay your rent, but you didn't show up, 
that's they went. If you damage the house and um peace camp and they sued you after you left and you didn't show up, that's on you. You know, and so um that's the same thing. Even down to court summonses, it depends on when they posted it. That's the thing on it. So now if you're not applying for a car, or if you already got a car and insurance, you might as well leave it on if it's fresh. If they just post it on your credit report, best believe they're gonna respond. Don't waste that. Just leave them there. You know, or you can do an FTC suite, which I suggest for some people, you gave me for the hour. Sign them up. That's it. Um Yo, oh, use Ring a laptop and take the flash drive. I need this flash drive back. This is my yes. one in there. Yeah, take the flash, take it off there, convert it to MP3, and then put on the flash drive and it can go off the I gotta fix the um I don't know what's going on with the Ethernet in that room. Um my bad. Um yeah, that was flash, right? Going back, and so utility bills. Um, court summonses, all the different things you have to see the tempo. And so the last date reported lets you know the tempo. At the top of the year, so a lot of times they're cashing in and cashing out on your debt and they're updating their stuff. That doesn't mean that they actually, um, that they're actually going to respond. That just means that, it means that they're going to respond. That doesn't mean that they actually have the information that they're supposed right, to it. have on the credit report. That how just long? lets you know that they're gonna respond. So seeing how they respond and you knowing the right. type of debt that it actually is would allow you to know what type of letter right. that you need to ask them for. Now it's not even a letter. You just have to um um know what response to say. It's not even a letter, it's just literally and there's some of the stuff is that I have no business relationship with this corporation. This debt is past the statute of limitations. This company is illegally operating the state of my own um, in my state. You know, these are basic lines. Um, now, answering it in court. So if you have a fraudulent, all right, so that's a couple of things. All right, answering a debt in court, um, look up the county and um, that's a different one and it depends on what the debt is. What I would do if I was at an answer for court, um, who the debt is from, what the debt is about, look up the history of that company, and look up any laws that apply to the debt in which they're stating that you have. That's what I would do on that one. And then from there, um, look up the code um, that they're trying to apply. One thing, um, answering it in court. Yeah, look up anything associated to that company and that debt. Anything associated with it and find any loophole that you can find. That's, just, that's, that's the first thing I would do with you. If I was on the phone with you. I'm applying for a house and they want me to pay off Capital One. Um, they don't want Capital One to be on your credit report. Finger hurt, and you've been disputing it for a year now. Um, and you have old medical bills. First, how old are the medical bills? And first time homeowner. Uh, I don't really like that first time homeowner thing. Um, that's that, she my French, or whatever you want to call it, that nigga shit. Um, Yeah. So yeah, depending on what it is. So let me show you another thing. So the beauty of um, they left. They went back with it. With G? Yeah. What is that? Who, Who made that? Ordered it. Why would so why look like that? That's Chinese food? Yeah, hell no. It's um chicken masala. Yeah. Mute it. I'm huh? trying to figure out why this shit looks so dead. I'm not a mute. Oh yeah, one
You got to have me. Hello? Excuse me, y'all. Studio stuff. So, yeah. The power of FTC Suite is that mm, they have 15 days to respond with all documents. And so this is one thing I would suggest that you would do. And that's what I would do. Um, that would be the first step if I couldn't get them off. The next thing, which I'm just now getting um, acquainted with, UCC, You see? So this is another way of checking. All real debt is supposed to be filed with your state. Absorb this. Every state has a UCC filing search. And any debt that's not validated via this search, according to the state, isn't real. And you can do this statewide and you can do this federally, if I'm not mistaken. So the state that you're in, you would do a UCC search, pay a couple dollars, and they're gonna mail you back a form stating whatever debt is on your um associated with your name and they have this in most states on every state No. And I was put onto this one by another credit repair agent. And he said, just get stuff off immediately. And going forward, that's another tool. So that's two more tools. Go about purchasing your first time, first home. Depends on where you're at. And that brings me right to a good question. Credit piggybacking, which I talked about earlier. So I remember I met this Jewish lady in housing court and she was like, she never had a mortgage loan. And I was confused. And it's because years later on, the way they play with money is different. And so your first time home, for you, although we may be using a mortgage, it may be in your best interest to find someone who um you may find someone who already paid off a house, who's paying off a house, and having them add you, someone who has um, some type of major line of credit in the field of real estate that they can add you to. So that way when you go to them, they're already seeing that you're able to handle large amounts of cash and large amounts and large loans amount. That will empower um, your credit profile and they'll be inclined to give you a, a, a financing amount very low. Nobody likes first-time purchases. Nobody does, especially when it comes to credit. People like people with history and people like people that have been paying off stuff. And that's why in business, business credit is based off of your payment history. And that's a complete different flip than the other way around. And so I'm gonna use that as a segue going into business. So business credit is seven scores for business credit three and six of which come from credit karma and i'm sorry three of them come from equifax three of them come from experience and one of them come from dun and brad ball whatever you saw the dmv you have three paid x scores and just like your regular credit report 
you have the combination amount of the average of your three credit um, pay that score. So if you wanted to sound cool, you can just say, hey, my average pay that score is this. Just saying something like that lets the people know that your person you know that you're talking to that you actually know what the heck they're talking about with business. Because if you have an average pay that score between three of your accounts, three of the credit report agencies, and it's not the same three, you're gonna get some cash. Um, going forward, forming a business, forming a business for me is different than what I was before. Unless you're a trades person or a craft, or you have a, per a great product, forming a business is like, I don't know what you're doing for. It is, yeah, I don't know what you're doing for. So now, understanding that business today's age is different. So if you don't know what your, um, most of what I'm saying, <laughs> my bad. Just tell me to repeat it and I hit you up. Or hit me on Facebook and I and I walk you through it. Um when you form a business, you get an EIN, right? Your EIN has to be activated in the sense for your business credit. It doesn't just immediately turn it on. In order to get it turned it on, you have to get um, what they're called net 30 accounts. These are accounts from vendors who give you um, 30 days to pay off your account. They have net 30, net 60, and net 90. Is getting four of these accounts at the same time, and once you get the four of them, then they post it on your DMV. And that's the way of getting around a DMV calls, because it costs to get a DMV number. And once they post it, and you get a DMV of 80, that means in 85, and that's pretty much meaning that you paid your credit, you paid off your net 30 within seven days of being invoiced, seven to 10 days of being invoiced, if I'm not mistaken. That is a very powerful number, because now it just goes back to knowing where to apply when you have an 85 pay that score. There are a lot of businesses who give a lot of money to people who have an 85 um, pay that score. And so going forward, that is something that we want to get into our mind, 85 pay that score. Now going with that, now as you, while you're forming these businesses, you already, let's say you just got some money, you formed a business, you got some credit, just form it. What services? I don't know, services, general services. And then you put, you put your money in that cap. Then you have something called bank rating. Bank rating is the flow of income in your account over a 90 day period pretty much. And so you want that to be in the fives. So fives means that you have a $10,000 or more in your account. So if you walk into a bank and say, tell the manager that you have a bank um, rating of five and you have a payment score of 85, they're going to give you one. Very simple. And you can just Google these things, bank rating, five loans, um, payment score 85, financing, very serious money. Now, when you combine these two, and this is the trick that most people get confused in understanding what to do with their business. Because when you hear people say you don't need your social for business, this is exactly what they're talking about. It's not no funny religious stuff or government stuff. It's just knowing that and how to turn on your business's um, DMV number and then knowing what businesses will give your business money based off of what they give you. Very simple. So again, when you form a business, you get an EIN. After you get an EIN, that just allows you to operate and open up certain things with your business. In order for your business to have a credit, in the sense of like how you have a personal credit, you have to activate it via DMV, via um, Equifax and Experian. How to do that is you have to get four net 30 accounts. Typically that's Quills, um, Office Max, Gas Station, um, similar stores like that. I forget the other one that's real easy. And then once you get the four of them, then you contact DMV, and that's how you get it activated for free, pretty much. The reason why you want to do this as soon as you start your business is because this is how you get financing for your business immediately. Immediately. Then at the same time, you're focused on your credit and using credit piggybacking to increase your credit availability. And then from there, you know, at a later time, I can show you exactly how to apply. Um, without applying, you do a pre-qualify um, one, and then from there, hopefully you'll get hit with a bunch of credit money, and that'll develop your credit profile on the personal side, 
You can increase your bank rating score because you can have more money flowing into your business, which will increase your bank rating and you'll be maintaining a positive pay index score. Those three things combined is a million dollars. Very simple. You get what you want out of these things when you have these things. So these are the things that you want to do um, going forward. So I was going to take a break at this point, so I'm going to go through and just look at whatever um, comments. If anybody want to chat in, let's see. I have derogatory most. I also have a lot of closed accounts. The first thing I would do is look at the date of those closed accounts. Um, credit packing backing is a difficult path. Depends on where you are and where you're at and who you know. That that That's definitely true. If not, I don't suggest purchasing trade lines, but um, that's what it is called online, trade lines. And there's tons of people who solicit them. Again, I don't recommend it. I would suggest taking the time and really searching for people who have it. Let me see. I don't want to pay none of this debt. All of the 16 is fraudulent based on the laws. Make sure what you're stating is the truth. And if it is fraudulent, you do an FTC complaint. And the beauty of that FTC complaint is that you're going to turn around after they approve it and be, and be deleted. You're going to sue them in your county court. And that's, that's no joke because it's very illegal to post for somebody's credit report without permission. And if you do it fraudulently and knowingly fraudulently, um, underneath the color of some fake law, even though you're not an officer, you definitely will have to pay for that. And the damages can go very far. If you know you were denied an apartment, you were denied housing, you were denied certain types of medical care, you were denied um, student loans, all of these things will add up to a reason why the damages um, that you'll be asking for in court can go into, you know, some of the, you know, not to say high thousands, but you can justify asking for a couple thousand dollars beyond five um, based off the fact that they violated. Um, going forward, and there's people already doing this across the country. That's how I found out about this stuff after that video when I was on that. People hit me up and was like, yo, you know, you could sue. And I looked up suing based off of this. And it was people actually doing it and consistently doing it. And there's a report from the government find, finding their credit reporting agencies a couple million dollars like a week or two ago. I'm not mistaken. 40 exactly what we're talking about. You know, knowingly posting them stuff from companies that they did not verify the debt from, which is the, the only reason they're there is to verify the debt. Um, yeah, so. That's that's one thing there. Um, so I thought find it. Somebody asked about the UCC. I to look at the other thing. I was sleep my food at the same time. Yeah, um, someone asked, says the credit reporting agencies, when they delete and not delete on the other one, it depends on, sometimes they um, just didn't respond at the same time. And remember the credit reporting agencies are in different regions. So there's a little time difference. Um, that would give them a little more time to respond. Side note, the reason why I asked about the car. Oh, good looks you said about the encyclopedias. I guess we would take it. We have a lot of books. I'm trying to build up our basic book collection um, and our literacy programs. So we have 10 each. Yo, one drama. You out sketch? Yeah. No, I said one. Right, 
Thank you. 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 Um, well, I don't know if you're my bad, Mr. Devil's Advocate. I don't know my bad. I don't know if you're a woman or man, but good post. Thank you for that. Great. Granger is the other one. Yep. And Granger was kind of weird. Can you still sue if it was removed? Yes. Um, um, if you, I take pictures of your credit report. Screenshot. If you're on a Mac, it's shift command four and then you highlight what it is take pictures of your, your your credit report and if they delete it you can go you can backdate your credit report via credit karma and um i give people the online links let me show you that all right so another reason why i don't do the, the, the letters so this is transunion Boom, bada, bing, ba, bing. You sign up to that bad boy right there. This is Experian. Boom, bada, bing, right there. Don't ask me why these links are not that easy to find. I don't know. Give you a bunch of conspiracy reasons. And this one right there, bada, boom, bada, bing. See? So, and for Equifax, you don't need that um, 10 digit confirmation number. And so that's Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. You can dispute anything on your credit report. Excuse me, anything in your credit report. It doesn't matter who it is. The credit reporting agency's job is to monitor credit and accounts that you get you know it's not their job to tell you anything beyond that they try to trick you because they get paid by these banks and they charge more money the longer your accounts have negative things on them to the people who post it so knowing that is good and knowing how to fight against them and the reason why i said that the reason my bad was because when you call up the credit reporting agency, someone said, "If you can, you call them." And online, they don't like to respect the statute of limitation for your state, and they're programmed not to understand it. So they'll say, "Well, we can't put that as an option, or it's not an option." So you, the option you would pick is, "I am no longer liable for this debt," or "I'm not liable for this debt," and you be very specific in your lingo and your wording because they use everything against you, and again, they're not on your side. So let me show you that again, because it's very important that y'all save that. You can hit me up on Facebook, um, and I'll be sending this to you. And you want to go directly to them. And you good, Raina? You want to start, or you want to? Um, what you call it? Um. Charged off accounts, you can just do again, you can just do anything. Charged off accounts are even easier because they really pretty much don't care. Let's see, going back forward. This is Project Flip. So if you're on Facebook, please add this. I post all of this information inside there. Anytime I help someone, I post information in there. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, uh, Project Flip stands for Financial Literacy Improvement Program. And so you can see. I post all this information inside of there. You know, so you can go in there and I, and I have information pertaining to your state and different things of that nature. This website here is credit pools, credit boards, and it's a very good site. So if you come here at first, let me show you just how you navigate it. The site gives you tons of information about credit. You go to the site creditboards.com, you go to pools, then you come down here. And we're in the East Coast. Well, I'm in the East Coast. Select your state. Um, whatever, let me put Virginia. A lot of Virginia, let me put Virginia. Boom. 
You see that? I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to absorb that. This site is so powerful. It gives you so much information. Let you see their credit score. You see that? So this is a credit board site. My bad, y'all. Boom. Stop that. Going forward. Cool. So I showed you information on that. And I just had to take this much time on it. I was an hour on it. I ain't gonna be doing no two hour feed. Um my bad, oh nine. You had debt from oh nine. What year is this? 2017. Oh no, that ain't good. Not any good. Um, any debt from 2009 is definitely not good. Check your state because some states have a 10 year statute. And if your 10 year statute is in effect and you were sued, you might have to take a different approach and try FTC suite, see if they're there, see if they're actually going to check the temple online and see if they're actually going to respond. Because if they're not going to respond, Hit them hard and then they're like, look, I don't got a copy of this letter. I don't care. Because they know that you still owe the money. Just because it's not on your credit report does not mean that you don't owe. How much for my services? It's free. Hit me up on Facebook. Black Power, baby. This is real black power. Action. Digital help. You know what I mean? Last 60 days, damn near, what, 60 people? Most is seven-year statute. No, most debt is not a seven-year statute. Um, the federal state is seven years. Um, you're disputing it. Does credit card from a company out of state, is that still legal? Look up your state. Look up your state, say debt, debt collection, statute of limitations. What state are you in? So this type of state you're in, and I'll do the right there so you all show you what it is. Um, disputing it, yes, but make sure that everything on it is past your date, your, your debt statute of limitation. Um, the student loans, student loans are a great form of debt. I know that sounds crazy, but just put it on a um, $5 status if you could. Um, and just get a minimum payment based on poor, I don't have the money. Excuse me. And based on that, um, you have a, a good loan on your credit for a long time. And that's a strong trade line, a very strong trade line. And it'll keep your credit score always in a high amount. You know, even if you messed up a couple payments, all you need is three payments to six payments to make your credit score go back up. Um, so let's see, Ohio, two people in Ohio, cool. Don't call no one directly. Don't do not call any debt collector directly. The first thing you do is go to your credit report and look at what's actually going on in your credit report. Um, you can send me an email. I'm just kind of reluctant to, you know, I'm really about this pro-black 
Um, like not saying that y'all aren't, but you know, the police don't like me. So that collection was, I'm sorry. So this is Ohio, so this is the first thing I would do. So see, Ohio has had another table six years, regardless. See, that's that California stuff, regardless of the type of debt. And the debt became overdue in the borrow last session. All right, so we know that up front now. So then you see this practices act. So is anything past the statute of limitations? Mm. Yeah, I'm reading this because I don't know. Um, the assignment was manifested by a written agreement separated from an addition to their document. See, all of that lingo, right? This is what I will look for. So if they're not allowed to practice law, um, litigation, and that would be the first part I would check. Now, some people still take the fact that um, if you didn't sign the contract, it's not valid. There are state laws that literally slew that. Yes, Project Flip, Financial Literacy Improvement Program. Um, so I have 20 accounts. I just need to have, I will have to dispute each one of them that's going to pass that. All of the ones pass your statute of limitations. So the first thing you want to do is organize everything that's in statute limitation status and put those in one folder and deal with that one time. I don't do the handwritten letters. If I got to write a letter, I'm on my white boy mad shit, whatever you want to call it. But you Billy made me write a letter and I'm upset. Um, so I go straight to the um, digital way. Um, I showed you the links. Um, well, I mean, one at a time. Yeah, well... When you log into your credit um, reporting agency account and make sure you use a, 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 an email that is for this. Don't use one that's for Facebook or for your job. Make one that's just for your business stuff. So you would basically see everything on your report that you can dispute. And from there, you can dispute um, everything listed at once. And that's a credit sweep. So you want to go down every single thing that's wrong with your credit report. And you want all of that stuff to come back. And that's what they call round one. So round one is getting all of these things attacked. And then from there, you take pictures of all of the stuff that you sent. And then when you wait for the response, they have 30 days to respond um, based off the regular credit of reporting agency. Um, at, and then from there, depending on how they respond, will let you know what you do in your second stage of letters. So there is no set letters. Stop asking for letters. It depends on what's on your credit report. It doesn't. So unless you just want a debt stat, uh, uh, um, a debt validation letter, which is just asking to prove um, the debt is yours, that is not going to work. You know what I mean? Peace, MJD, the second. Um, how do you get hard inquiries off your report? Tell them that it wasn't you. Um, that's it. They got to prove it was you that applied. Um, unless you actually did apply in person, then... Um, maybe a little different there. I would wait a little while and then tell them I didn't apply. That was it. Um, let's see, collect his name, charge of, can you still, and yeah, everything about this credit up here. I love it. I hope all y'all getting all this information is all it up. Um, 
Good luck to that, Virgo Smith. You already know, beloved. Please, I don't get hard and lose all. I hope that answers your question. Just log in and say that it wasn't you. Um, 2009. Let's go that with that. Going forward, easy, easy, easy. Cool. So, can we get into these um, educational programs? Not, I don't even think I'm going to talk about the educational programs tonight. Educational programs. Let me get three people saying, yeah. You're a third brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, beloved. Saying it. Um, going forward, I was going to talk on black empowerment programs. That was an hour, and that was a lot of talking. I ain't gonna lie. I don't like to. I love talking. I like I'm talking to myself right now. It's kind of some weirdo shit. Um. So, with that being stated, I'm going to end this broadcast. And I hope y'all learned a lot. Please share it. Subscribe to my page. Tell everybody to subscribe to my page. I'm going to be doing this way more often. Way, way more often. Peace and black love.